Greetings, Lucky Legends. Welcome to the dojo. My name is Lucky. This is Lucky Lad TV. I'm your host for this video. It's time for our week four PMC team builder against Yuma and the Chicago Cub choose now. Yuma's team is as follows. He has Mega Agron, Landorus Incarnate, Florgus, Tentacruel, Shaman, Skuntank, Hariyama, Garchomp, Rayunoclus, Nidoking, and Piloswine. He has four ice weaknesses with two double ice weaknesses. He has four ground weaknesses, three water weaknesses, and three psychic weaknesses. Everything else is two or below. So immediately I knew I needed my Curum. It is my ice stab on the team. I knew that we could live any one hit at full from either Garchomp or Landris Incarnate and then one-shot it with Ice Beam. However, in order to accomplish that, we would need the Habon Berry in case we were dealing with a Garchomp's Outrage. Because Garchomp's Outrage does a lot of damage. So, Ice Beam. I have Glaciate on there so that I could potentially slow down um, one of my opponent's Pokemon so that I could outspeed it the following turn. Curum's Speed is good, but it gets outsped naturally by Landers and Garchomp, which is a bit of a problem. All in all, I just... Every set on this team is pretty standard, except for one, which I will go over in detail. The rest of them are pretty, pretty normal. So, Ice Beam, Glaciate, Earth Power, and Psychic... Um, Dragon didn't hit anything on his team except for the Garchomp, and Ice hits Garchomp twice as hard and it stabs, so there was no reason whatsoever to run anything Dragon Stab. There really there was no purpose to it. Psychic was to hit something like the Hariyama. Thick Fat Hariyama eats up just about any other attack that we go for. If it's a Salt Vest, it'll still eat up the Psychic, but it'll do a hell of a lot more than an Ice Beam. And the Earth Power was for the Skuntank. Um, Ice Beam does a good amount to Skuntank, but Earth Power does more. Um, Earth Power was also very much for the Tentacruel. Um, obviously, Psychic also hits the Tentacruel, but I definitely needed that ground coverage for Skuntank. Otherwise, like an Assault Vest Skuntank would definitely wall me, and it could Toxic me and just like completely break down my longevity. But that was, you know, that was it for Curum. Uh, grayscale with the Habon Berry. Next up we have Bloodwing. Bloodwing naturally outspeeds his entire team. The fastest thing on his team is, in fact, the Garchomp. Which hits 102 base speed. Garchomp cannot outspeed us. Even if Garchomp is jolly... And we are adamant, we still outspeed the Garchomp, which is why I am running adamant. Because we do not need to outspeed anything on uh, Yuma's team. Everything gets outsped. Brave Bird, Super Fang, Tailwind, Cross Poison. I didn't really need U-Turn, because Yuma's got a lot of bulk on his team. I wasn't super wor- I didn't bother with U-Turn, because then I would be switching into an attack. Like, 100% of the time. Because we are out faster than everything except for potential Choice Scarf users. I have the Tailwind on there in case I can set up like a late game Tailwind sweep with... I was really thinking the Curum would be the one to do that, but there's a lot of variables to play around. Brave Bird hits pretty much everything on his team, and if it doesn't, I have Super Fang. The reason I have Super Fang is for stuff like the Mega Agron and the Garchomp, because I don't want to take ridiculous amounts of recoil. Well, Agron I just can't touch, but the Garchomp, between Rough Skin Rocky Helmet, I would lose probably half my health from one Brave Bird. Probably more than that, between all that stuff. So I wanted to avoid that and just go for the Super Fang. We still take the recoil, but we don't take the Brave Bird recoil as well. Next up we have Talisman, just Jolly Attack, U-Turn, Zen Headbutt, Iron Head, and Healing Wish. Uh, we have the Life Orb on there. Zen Headbutt just destroys Hariyama. Iron Head. Basically, just this set, it just does a lot of damage. I actually brought 
Jirachi for damage output in this battle because he has a lot of good coverage against my opponent. There's not really anything that just straight out walls us. Especially considering the fact that we have that Serene Grace flinch chance. Um, I have the Healing Wish in case I want to Healing Wish something back up late game. Um, you know, it's kind of like that backup plan that I could use if I really need to. But I'm going to skip Borealis because that's the only really in-depth set. Um, we have a Choice Scarf Crocodile. Earthquake Crunch Return Aqua Tail. Aqua Tail is because it hits the Landorus for super effective damage. It, that's really just the main purpose for it. It also hits the Pile of Swine for super effective damage, which is nice, as well as the Nidoking. It is just good for coverage. Crunch hits most of the things on my opponent's team. Earthquake hits most of the things on my opponent's team. Um, trying to set up a Scarf Moxie sweep is kind of just like the plan uh, for this. At plus two, I think Crunch kills just about everything. Except for like the Hariyama and potentially the Piloswine if it's max defense. It's not going to kill the Mega Aggron if it's invested in defense. It might not kill the Florigus, but pretty much everything else as I'm looking at it should go down. Maybe the Scum Tank because it resists it, but probably not. Either that or my plan was to get rid of any um, floaters on my opponent's team. Meaning um, the Landorus and really just the Shaman was the only other thing really. Um, just anything that resists ground and get an Earthquake Moxie Sweep because those are his only ground resists. Um, Mega Aggron can take an Earthquake, but it's not going to really appreciate it. And it can't really do that much back to us with the exception of like Super Power, which means that I can come in and Revenge Kill it because it will have lower defense. Then we have Karaoke. Now, I was really, really, really hoping Karaoke would be able to put in some work. Relic Song, Ice Punch, Knock Off, Close Combat. Um, Relic Song is just so that we can change from our area form to our pirouette form. The pirouette form being the normal fighting type version. Max speed and max attack. We have 128 speed and attack when we're in that other form. Which is why, obviously the stats look a little bit off, but, you know, it is what it's supposed to be. Ice Punch just destroys Landorus. Just absolutely destroys it. Knockoff hits the uh, Reuniclus, which is a very probable switch in to Meloetta because it does resist our fighting stab. It obviously resists the. I mean, nothing resists the normal stab except for the Mega Aggron. Yeah, that's the only thing that resists the normal stab. But it was just. There's really no point in running normal stab when you have knockoff coverage and then you have close combat, which just hits pretty much everything else. But that's all I really had in mind for uh, Meloetta. The last mon that I need to go over is Suicune. Now, it's a bit of an interesting set here on Suicune. I'm going to explain piece by piece why I have everything the way that I have it. So, 64 EVs in speed allows us to outspeed a max speed Jolly Hariyama. 252 EVs in defense and 60 EVs in HP allows us to take less than 25% from Mega Agron's uninvested Earthquake. Meaning like if Agron is running a fully bulk invested set, an Earthquake will do 24% max. And 132 EVs in Special Attack is just what we had left over. I, and I made it modest because I could. I could increase the damage output which without sacrificing those two things that I really wanted. Now, Sub Calm Mind Scald and Extra Sensory. Extra Sensory is the bit of the odd one here. Extra Sensory is to hit mostly the Tentacruel, and the Hariyama. That's really about it. Everything else gets hit either neutrally or super effectively by Scald. Extra Sensory really was just for the Tentacruel. Um, I have it for the Hariyama because if he was running Guts Hariyama and I burned it, it could be an issue because then it can kind of just blow me back. 
Um, especially like if he's assault vest guts, he I'm pretty sure beats us one v one. If I especially if I burn him. But we have sub leftovers with calm mind. This is more of a late game plan in my opinion, just because the only form of recovery that I really have is that leftovers. I would really need to get rid of like the shaman and probably the Hariyama too for this to be, you know, like a viable plan. I need to get rid of anything that can just like hit us really, really hard because at plus two Spideff, we live um, stuff like Seed Flare just fine, but Seed Flare has a 40% chance to lower your Spideff by two. So it would completely nullify the two um, Spideff raises that I had like just gotten. So, it was a bit of an interesting set. I'm not going to tell you what happened during the battle. Again, this is happening after the battle when I'm recording this. But, I was very confident in the squad. The battle is an amazing battle. It's extremely close. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to tell you what the outcome is. But, I definitely wanted to record my thought process for this. I want to thank you all so very much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, con comment, and subscribe down below. It's very much greatly appreciated. But with that, I'm going to get about. Best luck out there. I will see you all soon. Goodbye.